To design a electrical system for ADA standards is to do something with handicapped people in mind. Um, so most commercial buildings for sure are up to ADA requirements. Uh, a lot of bigger cities are making residential applications do the same thing, but there are places where they don't really take into account ADA standards. So anytime I do a design, doesn't matter residential, commercial, I always do it to ADA. So ADA in Annex J of the 2020 National Electrical Code will talk about the different ADA standards. So there is such a thing as a forward reach if uh, somebody is in a wheelchair and they go to reach out in front of them, there's a certain height that we have to put things within so that they can reach them. And then they have a forward reach that's low as well. So if they're in a wheelchair, they, you know, they can actually reach like a receptacle. There's also a thing called side reach, but those numbers for our purposes are gonna be the exact same thing. So uh, first thing that I do is I make sure all my receptacles are at 80, 18 inches to the top because the forward reach is 15 inches, meaning they can't reach anything lower than 15 inches. So you need to put all of your stuff higher than 15 inches. And I find if I put the top over receptacle at 18 inches, then the first receptacle of the duplex receptacle ends up being about 17 inches. Then the bottom one ends up being about 16 inches. So you're above that 15 inches. Um, and then the same thing for my switch heights, all my switch heights, you're supposed to stay uh, within 48 inches, you can't go any higher than 48 inches. So typically I'll put the top of my box at 48 inches. That brings the actual switch, the center of the device to, you know, like 46 ish in that ballpark so that they can still reach it. All right. So for today's code time, let's talk about luminaires. Um, there's a single light fixture that I put a light box in one of the closets. What they're saying is going to be a closet. They still don't really know what they're doing. Might be a pantry, might be a closet, who knows. But I wanted to make sure that when I wired it that I was wiring it as a closet per code. So what does it say in Luminaires if we open up 410 about putting lighting in closets? There's some things that have changed in the last few years. Um, if we go to 410.16, we have Luminaire types permitted and then there's luminaire types not permitted. So in closets, only luminaires of the following types shall be permitted in closed closets. Surface mounted or recessed incandescent or LED luminaires with completely enclosed light sources. That's the key. Number two, surface mount or recessed fluorescent luminaires. Surface mount fluorescent or LED luminaire identified as suitable for installation within the closed closet storage space. So that's pretty much, that like limits everything that we're gonna do in there. You no longer can you have a keyless fixture with an incandescent light or a halogen light or something like that inside of the closet. If it is incandescent, it can be surface mount or recessed, but it has to be a completely enclosed light source, meaning that there's no way that clothing is going to come in contact with this super hot light bulb. Uh, B, luminaires not permitted. Incandescent luminaires with open or partially enclosed lamps and pendant luminaires or lamp holders shall not be permitted. So a lot of these fancy ass pendants where people are putting incandescent bulbs and they're hanging down and they're catching everything in the closet on fire. Um, there's places around here where they want only LED, they don't give a shit, they wipe all of the stuff away and say LED only in closets. Now, the location is another thing to keep in mind. The minimum clearance between luminaires installed in closed closets and the nearest point of closed closet storage space shall be as follows. 12 inches for surface mounted incandescent or LED luminaires with a completely enclosed light source installed on the wall above the door or on the ceiling. Number two, six inches for surface mounted fluorescent luminaires installed on the wall above the door or in the ceiling, same thing. Um, six inches for recessed incandescent or LED luminaires with a completely enclosed light source installed in the wall or the ceiling, six inches for recessed fluorescent luminaires installed in the wall or the ceiling, and then surface mounted fluorescent or LED luminaires shall be permitted to be installed within the closed closet storage space where identified for this use. Thought that was interesting. Now back to the show. <laughs> So if we're talking about the conduit size, it's also a good thing to mention that there are uh, charts in the National Electric Code that talk about 
how many conductors of what size can go into what conduit. There's Annex C and there's Chapter 9, several different tables in there. The intent of this video is not to show you guys how to do that. I do have a video on my channel. If you go to YouTube, go to uh, Electrician U channel and you can search for conduit fill. Today we're gonna talk about conduit fill, but how full you make a conduit also matters. And the number of conductors that you stick in there. Now also in code, for rigid we are in 344. 0.26 bends. Number in one run. There shall not be more than the equivalent of four quarter bends or 360 degrees total between pull points. For example, conduit bodies and boxes. And the reason is at a certain point, it becomes so difficult to pull that you start yanking and you can start to um, damage the insulation. You start rubbing it too much on the conduit, pulling it through sharp edges, um, just stretching it out, like wrapping it around your hand, bending it all, like you start to mess up the insulation. And the other thing to think about is that somebody might have to pull the conductors out at some point or add some more down the line. And if you've got conductors already in the conduit, and you're trying to add to it, and you've got like 720 degrees worth of bends, you're screwing everybody over in the future. So there's reason why it is code. So no more than 490s or all of the angles, if you got a couple of 45s and 30s and some kicks and stuff, all of it in total between one pull point and another pull point, uh, you, you can't have more than four bends. Now, if you've got like six pull points, you can have 360 between each one of the pull points. That's fine. It's not saying the whole run. It's just saying where it's accessible to feed wire in and pull out, you can't have more than 360 degrees of bends. So on that note as well, let's talk about the conductors, the amount of conductors that you can put in a conduit. I'm not going to break in detail about it, but there is a uh, general uh, table in chapter nine, table one, that says that we need to use, if you're putting more than two conductors in, the cross-sectional area or percentage of the conductors uh, of the conduit that you can fill is only 40%. So 40% of the total conduit is how full, how many conductors we can put in. So all of the sizing to figure all that out is further in chapter nine in, in Annex C. Uh, but there is a kind of cross-sectional area number and it goes into, if you're doing a nipple, which is any conduit that's 24 inches or less, that there's a little bit more of an allowance because it's just such a small area. So they're not as worried about it as they are for a really long pull where it's gonna be really difficult because you're adding all that weight and length of conductor. <laughs> I got all of my conduits strapped. I did strapping probably about every four feet or every five feet. Um, you don't have to do that per code. <laughs> Electrical metallic tubing. We're gonna be in 358. That is what I ran. Uh, 358.30 specifically is the securing and supporting section. EMT shall be installed as a complete system in accordance with 300.18 and shall be securely fastened in place and supported in accordance with 358.30 A and B. A is for securely fastened and B is for supports. So we're not running along any supports. We are securely fastening this to something. So it says EMT shall be securely fastened in place at intervals not exceeding 10 feet. In addition, each EMT run between termination points shall be securely fastened within three feet of each outlet box, junction box, device box, cabinet, conduit body, which is what these LBs, LRs, and LLs are, or other tub tubing terminations. So it says basically any uh, where, where we have these conduit bodies within three feet somewhere, I have to have a strap. I have to have it securely supported. And then within every 10 feet, I can't make my strap go over 10 feet. Can you strap more than that? You know, like every foot? Yeah, absolutely. Code is only the minimum. So you can strap as many times as you want. I often think once every 10 feet is kind of a weak method of, of securing and supporting. It is the minimums, it's okay. I just kind of like doubling that up a little bit. Every five feet is my preference. 